I made a video about how to use .env files to keep your API keys secret when you're coding, but then I had a good question from Deepali, who asked, if I have my code deployed on a server from a repository, will hiding my API key using this method so that it is not visible in the repo affect anything? The answer is yes, you should not use .env files when you're deploying code to a server, but there are two alternatives you can use instead. Your first option is to add your API keys directly to the server environment, and you can do that in the server's terminal. So I'll do it locally here just to show you. We use the export command, so export, and then you put your variables name, key, and value. So it would be, for example, open AI API key equals, and then my open AI key. That's it. Easy, but the disadvantage is it's a one-time thing. So when you reboot the server, this variable will just disappear. A better way to do this, to make it persistent, is to put it into a file called bashrc, which on Linux systems is run every time the server is rebooted. So you would use a text editor to add that, just like this. Uh, let's use nano, because it's easy. And then we'll access our bashrc file by going to the home directory with the tilde, a little squiggle, then a slash, and it's actually a hidden file, so it's dot bashrc. It's empty at the moment, but you, here you would just add exactly the same command. So export and then the variable openAI API key. All right, and then control X to save this. Okay, now just putting it in that file doesn't actually do anything. We do need to run that file if we're not gonna reboot the server. And to do that, it's very easy. Just use the source command and then the file name. So again, tilde slash dot and then bash rc. Let's run that file. Now, how do we use that when we've actually exported it? Well, let's write a quick Python program which will demonstrate that. It's very easy. We do need to import the OS module. The OS module is built into Python, so don't need to install anything but we need to import it. And I'm gonna use OpenAI as a demonstration, so I'll also need to import the OpenAI module. Okay, let's set the OpenAI key to what we just set as our environment variable. And so to do that, we use the getEnv method, the getEnv function, which is inside the OS module. So it's OS, and within that, the getEnv method. And here we just put the name of the variable that you set. And so I used uh, OpenAI API key, I think it was. Right, and to prove that works, let's now print out the API key from the OpenAI module. So print an AI dot API key. Hopefully, I'll save and run this and it should show us the sort of fake key that I just set up. So back in my terminal, I'm actually using um, Python 2 and 3 on this machine. So Python 3, and then that's my Python program. And it prints my OpenAI key, brilliant. It worked, that's how you can access an environment variable, such as an API key, without using a .env file. That's how you use your server's terminal, but a different way, and actually one that I recommend, is better if your hosting platform has the ability for you to save environment variables, sometimes called config variables. Uh, I'll show you using Heroku as an example. So let's go to the Heroku dashboard. Here we go. In the dashboard for your app, you want to go to settings and then scroll down a bit. Here we are. They call them config vars in Heroku. Reveal them. I haven't got any set at the moment, but here you would set the key and the value just as we did before. So for example, open AI API key, and over here, my open AI key or whatever it is. And then once you add that, it's now stored and you can access it in your Python program exactly the same as we did before. So using the os.getenv function. And if you ever finish using this key, or if it gets revealed somehow, then fortunately you can easily destroy it like that. 
Other platforms use a pretty similar method to this, whether it's uh, Amazon EC2 or Vercel or whatever. So there you go, two methods. I recommend the hosting platform's built-in method, but if not, you now know how to do it on the terminal as well.